Eight candidates have been shortlisted to replace suspended public protector Busisiwe Mkwabane, whose term will come to an end in October. They'll be facing questions by Parliament's ad hoc committee over the next two months before MPs then vote on a single person. A recommendation will then be made to the President for appointment. We have all applied, uh, looked at the comments, we've looked at the questionnaires, uh, we've looked at the surveys, uh, all of that against the, the guidelines that we have adopted uh, this morning. So let's look at that. This must be up to eight. Uh, it's Ms. Lokaimane, uh, Advocate uh, Chipanyani, Advo uh, Advocate Mare, Advocate Talega. Uh, Advocate uh, Josie, um, Advocate Msewa, uh, Ms. Legwaba, uh, Professor Mosinyani. Of course, um, we note that other colleagues did not participate in the process. So, so minor, the summer was not in the meeting, and Honorable Chanchi did not, Honorable Brian Pat did not, and Honorable um, uh, Dr. Gondwe also did not. So, but this is the outcome of the process. Well, let's speak more than to Cyril Kaba, who's the chairperson of the ad hoc committee that will now play a very crucial role in the selection of the country's new public protector. A very good evening to you, sir. I'm grateful for your time. Perhaps before we go any further, let's talk to the process that you have had to follow to even get to the point where you've now got the shortlist of five candidates. Uh, good evening, uh, Tembegile, and thank you very much for welcoming, welcoming you. Uh, today, the ad hoc committee started the shortlisting process by adopting the guiding principles. The guiding principles describe the qualities or attributes of a fit and proper person. The principles answer the question, what is a fit and proper person? The Constitution says we must look for a suitably qualified person who is fit and proper. It, the Public Protector Act stipulates the qualifying requirements. I must say, uh, Tembele, that all 38 candidates passed the first sifting process because they are suitably qualified. Uh, that was easy. It was just a matter of uh, ticking the box. Mm -hmm. The most difficult part was to select um, a, a people who are fit and proper. And um, so we needed a list of eight candidates. Uh, there are many who had to do a balancing act. Uh, um, so we were assisted by the CVs, uh, the candidate questionnaire that the candidates were required to fill out, as well as the public comments. I must thank uh, the public. And um, it confirms that our democracy is both representative and public participatory, not only during elections, but in the decision-making process as well. Mm -hmm. I thank the media for raising the public awareness. You are doing it even now. Right, yes. and just on the thoughts of the public, Mr. Glover, and uh, you say you thank the public for the way in which they've participated in this process. Um, perhaps it's worth you telling us, in the selection of these eight candidates, what the public is telling you at this point about the sort of public protector they believe South Africa needs, because in the last decade or so, we've certainly seen a rise in the profile of the office. With that have come multiple controversies from the Madonzela era straight into the Mkwabane period, where now we're seeing an unprecedented event where she may soon become the first ever public protector to face impeachment. So what do the public think this country should be looking for in a public protector? Well, you recall um, uh, that uh, we asked the public uh, to nominate a, a suitably qualified and uh, fit and proper uh, person. They've nominated um, and, um, um, and uh, of about 53 and about uh, 17 of them uh, put in their applications. Altogether, we had about 70 uh, candidates. We shortlisted that number to about 38, and the two of them withdrew. It then uh, 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 left us with, uh, with 36 uh, candidates, from whom we shortlisted to eight uh, candidates. Look, uh, the public, um, in their comments, um, you've seen um, them uh, basically, uh, you know, largely they were uh, talking in support of uh, their candidates. 
is the Corruption Watch that um, uh, commented on almost all of them. But, of course, they were limited by the fact that they only had CVs, CVs available. They did not have the, the questionnaire that um, the committee um, was able to source uh, from them because they had to fill out to, uh, the, the, the questionnaire, and that assisted the great deal. And as I say, we, we are basically looking, I think, the public is in support um, um, uh, of this process. We are looking for someone who... A person with integrity, with uh, gravitas, dignity, a person who is able to perform functions without fear, favor, or prejudice. Someone who has a capacity to, ex to give expression to the values of the constitution. Someone with courage, independence, and all competent. So that's the qualities that um, uh, we were looking at, of course, supported by, by the public. So we're happy that uh, the process has got that far and uh, um, that we now have eight people. It was quite um, a, a daunting exercise because you were presented with people who, presents, who present these uh, qualities, but we still had to drill down to, to weekly the list down to, uh, to eight names. How contentious do you expect the interview process to become? Because even today, for example, um, the EFFMP, uh, I think it was Yoli Sayako who indicated that basically the party has a clear stance on one of the candidates. The inference there is that it's the acting public protector, Kolega Traleka. How contentious then, how robust, shall I say, do you expect the interviews to be? And how do we avoid a sort of partisan process um, that is perhaps to the detriment of a fair process, possibly. But I must say that uh, so far uh, the, the process has not been partisan because um, if members were uh, talking. Yes, we know they come from the different uh, political parties, um, but we, we are together. I'm really happy that the list that we produce, that we produced, um, it, it has the support of all the parties represented in, in, in the committee. So, we, so, so it was uh, adopted unanimously. So I have no uh, qualms about, about that. Well, look, of course the candidates will be before us, and the, 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 the reason they are before us is so that we can interview them. You know it's going to be it's a robust process, Mm -hmm. And we're dealing with an office of the uh, public protector. I mean, uh, uh, thanks to the previous public protector, uh, Professor Tulima Donzela, she brought the, the level of awareness as far as um, this office is concerned to the highest level. And um, of course, the courts in interpreting our laws, interpreting our constitution, especially the Bill of Rights, have actually made our people even more aware of their rights. Hence, they had to uh, assert their rights, uh, place a lot of demands, and take no nonsense, so to speak. And um, because they knew that the, 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 the office of the public protector uh, was there uh, for them as, as a watchdog. Um, on behalf of the public. And it's one of the Chapter 9 institutions is there to support and strengthen our democracy. Right. And Dr. we need this request. With that in mind, before we run out of time, you mentioned former public protector Tulima Donzella. Um, the now suspended public protector is going through her own parliamentary process uh, and inquiring to her fitness to hold office. Do you expect any of what's coming out of there to potentially overshadow this process or, in fact, put added pressure on you as the committee and the candidates who appear? Well, look, I mean, the Section 194 inquiry that you are referring to that relates to the current uh, public protector is drawing to a close um, in a matter of days uh, from now. And, um, and I must assure you uh, that the two processes are not uh, linked uh, um, in any way. They are independent of each other. Uh, the, this one is looking into the fitness of the current public protector, and we are looking into the fitness of the new of a new public protector, as it, as it were. So again, it, it, it's, the constitution provides for appointment and removal of the public protector. So if 
parliament um, upon uh, a, a, you know information feels that the the public protector is not actually um, doing uh, what the constitution requires of him or her then it's perfectly within their right to uh, initiate the removal uh, process i'm not one to comment on the current process that is, is going I'm speaking um, to uh, uh, addressing the principle in general. Mr. Klaba, thank you very much for that, Sir Klaba, Chairperson of the Ad Hoc Committee, that will, in the coming weeks, start the process to interview candidates for the Office of Public Protector.